So we've overcome those two barriers of cost and time. The other thing you have to think about in positioning this technology is we don't position this to replace cultures because cultures still have a valuable, or a valuable tool for certain types of infections, mainly acute infections. So in acute infections, you're dealing with planktonic bacteria, single cell bacteria, strep throat, which this is strep pyogenes as an example of that, where you can grow it, you can do a sensitivity, you can put them on the antibiotics, and it works perfectly well, that whole system. Where it lets us down or falls is when we're dealing with chronic infections. So this is, a, this is under electron microscope. So bacteria behave in two ways. They behave in planktonic form and causing acute infections, and then they decide to form their nice collaborative communities, which we call biofilms. And collaborative means to share. So they're doing a lot of sharing, which really enables them to survive and become very, very difficult to, to deal with. So where we position next-gen sequencing in molecular is really for chronic type infections. I'm not gonna tell a primary care doctor to stop doing rapid strep tests and then move to next-gen sequencing. But if you're dealing with a chronic wound or a bone infection, osteo, or lo you're looking at nails and you wanna find out what's really in there, then it's, it's the technology to use. So in your again, situation, again, you're seeing wounds, you're seeing infected nails, you're seeing bone, osteo, and you're even dealing with maybe some hardware issues where bacteria attach to the, to the hardware. As any new technology, you always gain your national opinion leaders first. So we have a lot of the, in, in terms of wound care, most of the top national opinion leaders using us now. Carolyn Fife is in, in, in Houston, Texas, and she's the editor of the main wound care textbook, Sheffield and Fife. Some of you might know James McGuire at Temple in Philadelphia. And then we have Steinberg and Adinger at Georgetown. Georgetown is probably one of the preeminent wound care centers in the nation known for their limb salvage programs. And they've been using us for years and currently doing a study with us. The barrier to this was cost. So why is it that the LabCorp and Quest and other labs can't do this? It's really, really expensive to do. Think about it. You're going you're gonna to do extraction of, from a sample, and then you're going to match it to a database of 25,000. The reason why we, I'm here today, and you can have access to this really neat technology, is because our business is subsidized by our research side. We do massive sample volume for major corporations and the government. The scientific community has moved away from cultures. They don't use cultures anymore because no, they know they are not very accurate. When they're spending millions of dollars on product development, they want to know how their product is working. They send their research samples to us. So at Procter & Gamble, you all know what they make, whether it's toothpaste or cleaning products, anything related to microbes, and they want to see how their product is performing, they send their research samples to us and we tell them. If Johnson & Johnson develops a new wound dressing and you're using it on your wound patients and they have to prove to the FDA its impact on bio burden and biofilms and bacteria in wound beds. They don't use cultures, they send it to us. Medtronics develops a new sinus debridement tool. Again, they send their research samples to us to prove that their tool works effectively in the OR at removing bacteria from sinus tissue. We even do work for the CDC. The CDC can do next-gen sequencing, but they can't do large volumes. So they send it to us and we do it for them. We do military, the one we're most proud of is, is, is NASA, uh, those who've seen the, the movie Martian where uh, he's up there driving around in a rover, well NASA, we have a rover up on Mars right now, it's called the Curiosity. And NASA and the engineers and scientists were deathly afraid of sending microbes from Earth up to Mars and creating whole new life forms, I guess. So they came, they showed up in Lovett, Texas and we did the diagnostics for the Mars rover to make sure they weren't sending bacteria to, to Mars. We also did recent publication where they wanted to look at the microbiome in the International Space Station. So you got all these different pop, uh, co people coming up from Europe, Russians, J Asians, all populating the International Space Station. They wanted to see what bacteria had established themselves, what microbiome had established itself in the space station, and we did all the diagnostics. The point of all this is that I wouldn't be here today if we, if we didn't have this as our basically subsidizing our ability to do a very, very expensive technology. It's thousands and thousands of dollars per run. The more samples you run, your cost per sample comes down. So my message to doctors is you're getting access to a really powerful tool. It's the only reason why you're getting access to it and Medicare is paying for it is because it's subsidized by this business. And this is what kind of, for me, it's nice because the barrier to entry, the LabCorp and Quest aren't offering this and the other, no other lab in the nation is offering this but us. A lot of them will do PCR, but none of them will do next-gen sequencing.